guys, and welcome to Butterfly Tea Time. I hope you have your tea and your coffee ready. Thank you so much for joining us. We're entering into February, the month of love, and we really want to encourage and educate that love comes in all different shapes and forms. It's within you, it's in with, within me, and you can find it right here in our community. Today, we really want to highlight um, Chanel, who is an amazing caregiver and lupus warrior herself. And currently, the love of her life is going through dialysis. Many of you know him, male lupus warriors, CEO, Emmett Henderson, the first male lupus warrior to climb Mount Kilimanjaro, the highest mountain in Africa, to raise lupus education. Yes. Welcome, Chanel. Thank you Just for having me. You. So good to see you. Thank you. We really wanted to highlight you this month for a lot of the works that you're doing in the community yeah. and also for taking care of our dear brother while he's going through dialysis. <laughs> well, just how to easy. share some tips and tricks with um, the rest of the community that are currently experiencing this. Emmett is Emmett's doing really well. I mean, every day is a struggle, don't get me wrong, um, especially dealing with the magnitude of what we're dealing with. This isn't, this isn't the first go around, this is now the second go around. So he's experiencing a lot of different uh, symptoms, a lot of different uh, things are happening. And sometimes it frustrates him, but he, he's always in good spirits, always positive and always pushing forward. That's good, that's good. Cause that can be hard. That can be hard to stay positive when you constantly battling. Yeah. extremely you know there's something that i learned a long time ago was that hurt people hurt people that's right but healed people also heal people mm. and um i think once i learned that and recognize that that's what's helped me be a caregiver mm. um but i also think in a way um being a caregiver is something that god predestined in my life um i say that because i always wanted to be a soldier from the time i was a little girl is what i dreamed about and I became one. I became one um, against a lot of odds. Like I was 15 when I had my first child. So of course I was a failure. I wasn't gonna graduate high school, et cetera, et cetera. And I wound up graduating and I went to college and went in the military and all of my children followed suit. Uh, you know, graduating high school, we broke um, a lot of cycles in our family, you know, broke a lot of chains too. And then I think also coming down with lupus and going through my journey in the beginning really humbled me a lot. Yeah, it will. It is a way of, of humbling us, knowing you who you really are. Yeah. You never know how strong you are until you have to be. Exactly, exactly. So how did you earn the name G.I. Shane? <laughs> well, my name is Chanel, like you guys know. <laughs> And it's spelled like the guy's name, Shane, with two L's. And the military um, will only put in the first five letters of your name. They cut off, if anything, over seven letters. So when I first reported to boot camp, my paperwork said Shane NMN, which means no middle initial, Smith. And I look like a man on paper. <laughs> uh, even the selective service sent me telling me I needed to register. And I was like, well, I already joined. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so I report and to the barracks that I'm supposed to, and it was an all male barracks. And I have the <laughs> drill sergeant just screaming at me like, "Female, where's your battle buddy?" And I, I don't know what a battle was at that yet, you know. Um, <laughs> so instead wow. of GI Jane, I became GI Shane. <laughs> so we we went with that. <laughs> That is funny. <laughs> it was, yeah. It's funny yeah. now. It wasn't quite funny then, but. <laughs> <laughs> that's the story. That's yeah, story. that's how it started. Wow. I love that so much. So that yeah, just like you know, a, whole, a whole poetry flow right there. Huh? Oh. <laughs> yes. Yes, definitely. definitely. And what is your, uh, what's your actual emblem? Um, what do you, what do you mean my emblem? Like what You're I smoking. use? Oh, Wait, not I every smoking. GI is a Joe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. I like that. Yeah. I like that. I really, really like that. Well, because there's more women now serving in the military. Oh, um, you know, the statistics cool. for women in, in the last 10 years, and, and I just know about these statistics because I'm about to have an event for female veterans, but in the last 10 years, 
female veterans are now the most homeless. And they are also suicides and female veterans went from 4% to 21% in less than 10 years. Oh no! And so a lot of people think that suicide is only because of a battle tragedy, meaning they went to war and they, no, you don't have to go to war to suffer. Um, they're with the way our technology has went. Uh, there's a lot of people who serve deployments here in the States, but they have to do other things elsewhere. And so that becomes a heavy load when you have to experience certain things over and over. Yeah. 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 That's, that's horrible. And I never knew that, but I guess I never thought about it from that, from that side. I just thought that most of the suicide was like maybe seeing so many people die. So being in the military, but I'm glad that you did share that with us. So is that one of the things that fuels you to stay driven while caring for others because you've had so many different experiences, even your lupus experience and even being in the military and have is that one of the things that help fuse fuse your desire that keeps you focused and driven? Yes, definitely. Um witnessing what I've had to witness, uh watching friends go through different things. Um and then again my own accident. Um I, I wound up in 2008 having an accident, a uh, vehicle rolled over me. And I spent 18 months in a hospital bed and I had to learn how to rewalk. Um, I had a lot of injuries, but I wasn't healing. Mm -hmm. And by 2011, I got a phone call from my doctor asking me why I had not come in to discuss my having lupus. And I, I needed to come in and, and get treated, you know, because it was really bad at that time. And I'm like, what is lupus? I had no clue. Wow. And so that's how I found out. And, uh, yeah, that definitely every, I think everything, every hurdle that you have to go over, it humbles you or it, it may, not, it doesn't humble everyone. Some people go through a lot of stuff and it makes them, it hardens them. Yeah. For me, um, doing my job in the military, I was a 56 Mike. I was a chaplain assistant. I was a bodyguard for a chaplain mm -hmm. and I had to provide religious support and counseling to troop members and their families. Wow. Wow. <laughs> and so learning that job, um, help me become a caregiver. And, but I also have been through caregivers fatigue. Um, and that is something that a lot of people don't realize what caregivers fatigue is. You get tired of caring. You get tired of having to watch over others. And when I had that happen to me, I really went on a self-love journey uh -huh. and I was by myself. And I was an empty nester, by the way. <laughs> and and uh, it was definitely eye opening for me, for me. Wow, um, that you covered a lot. Um, <laughs> just, just a brief uh, thought on that. Um, so you actually found out that you had lupus because the doctor contacted you to, to ask why you wasn't getting treatment. That's wow. mm -hmm. yeah. So wow. that's how that's how I found out. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I, I was still digesting that. Yeah, like, yeah. Up right, of yeah. everything else, like you had had a horrible accident and then mm -hmm. find out. Find that, out, yeah. Like yeah. in a weird way, a different way. Everyone, very, uh, very. Yeah. I'm just wondering how were you able, with such a horrific accident, able to deal with the pain if you are allergic to pain medicine? Um. So initially... I went, I would say I went down a really dark hole. Um, I really got depressed. I was in pain nonstop and nothing was helping. Um, I was having, it seemed like I was having a surgery left and right. I could only get pain medication when I was in the hospital because I had to have beta blockers uh -huh. um, so that I wouldn't have allergic reactions. And then also, um, the, the pain medication that I could take, I was concerned that my body would get addicted to it eventually because uh -huh. our, our bodies are designed to regenerate themselves. Mm -hmm. So anything that you put in your body long enough, you're going to get naturally addicted to. Uh -huh. And I was blessed that I got sent to this amazing pain specialist. Uh, she was from Louisiana and uh, she was helping me mentally understand the pain uh -huh. and how that I could use food to combat pain. I could use seasonings to combat pain. 
I could use, um, you know, just different things, different things. Uh, she exposed me to a lot of stuff that, that I just know I was blessed to be exposed to. And then I've always been that type that when I go through something or someone I love is going through something, I research it. Yeah. I research, yeah. I research, I research, I research. <laughs> so I learned through diet and also um, my own just being open, learning to be more open, learning to express my pain instead of holding it in. Um, just saying, hey, I don't I don't feel good today. I can't do it. Yeah. I can't I can't hang with y'all. I'll catch you next time. Because I used to try to always be the one that, oh, yeah, I'm ready to go. Where you want to go? When you want to go? Mm -hmm. Pain or not. Yeah. But then I, when I, I realized, hey, you, you need to slow down. You really need to take care of yourself first. Yeah. So that's how I managed it. I mean, but it was definitely, I battled depression a lot for a long time yeah. Yeah. until I became a medicinal patient. <laughs> and then once go. I became a medicinal patient, uh, again, I educated myself and researched yeah. and researched and researched mm -hmm. um, what was the best method for me. Uh -huh. And so I, I have a regimen that I use along with food and diet. Uh -huh. And I can agree. I can attest to all of that, mm -hmm. especially the, the diet, the, mm -hmm. the mindful movement, you know, movement is lotion, you know. <laughs> so the more you move, the better you feel. The mm -hmm. medicinal. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I try to use the RSO before mm -hmm. I use pain medicine when I'm mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. downing from a treatment when I've just yep. had a procedure I go get my medicinal RSO yep. and I say I need this for a treatment the procedure I have coming up and and I'm fine and I don't have to worry about all the extra side effects from the pain medicine. exactly exactly what is an RSO RSO is a really potent um form <laughs> of marijuana it's called oh. rick simpson oil yeah and uh rso it they are using it to treat cancer uh -huh. and I, I mean that's how strong it is uh -huh. and and i can attest to it when i went through ovarian cancer 2018 was a turning point for me in my life um i had to have a full hysterectomy because i had ovarian cancer uh -huh. and um my best friend, they were about to put a pick line in because I was so skinny. Uh -huh. Couldn't hold any food down whatsoever. And my best friend asked the doctor, hey, can we give her something? And of course, I lived in a state where it was not legal. And my doctor was like, I'm not going to say yes, but I'm not going to say no. And so um, a good friend brought me some RSO and I didn't have to have a pick line. Uh -huh. And I went from not functioning to about... Almost 10 weeks later, I was up walking just like normal, like it, like nothing was. And, and acupuncture Damn. helps too. Acupuncture helps a lot too. Oh, yeah. 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 I do physical therapy. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So it sounds like you've really been on quite a journey, not only yeah. with like all the different things that have been put in front of you, but also with just finding your way to wellness and self care. Most definitely. You know, it's, it's someone commented, a uh, co-worker, she was like, you know, Chanel, you always come in with your hair done, your makeup. And she said, to look at you, we'd never know you'd uh -huh. went through anything. And I think that's what a lot of lupus patients go through. You yeah. know, you look yeah. at them and, you know, I make sure I get up, get dressed, do my hair, you know, make sure I'm dressed before I go outside the house because that's kind of my shield. There you, you, know, you know what I mean? Like as a soldier, I had my uniform. Yeah, I had, that was my shield. That was that was my yeah. Superman cape. <laughs> yes, ma'am. So I had to learn that even when I felt my worst, to look my best. You know, my granny used to say, "Never wear your worries; it'll age you before your time." Oh, and write that down. Yeah, it was hard to learn that though, too, because if you only act like you're always okay when you're really hurting, nobody knows how to help you. Because you're so used, that's all anyone sees is you okay. And so I had to learn when to say I wasn't feeling good and I needed help, and then when to just keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that can be hard being a Shiro, right? Man. <laughs> Man. Every Shiro wants to 
We yeah. want to battle it out by ourselves. We don't want to burden anybody else. Yes, yeah. most definitely. Yeah. It really is true if you're always the one comforting others and you never yeah. show that sometimes it's a bad day for you that people don't know how to react to it. Yeah. They really they don't. They yeah. don't. Yeah. Yeah. And I think us being vulnerable and being able to acknowledge that we're not having a good day yeah. allows them to be able to respond because so like you said, so many times we we look fine on the outside, yeah. but we're yeah. but we're really suffering a lot. But you know, we're so accustomed to saying I'm fine. I'm okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Reality, a lot of times we're really not okay. So just having the vulnerability and being able to share that today is not really a good day. Yeah. Right. And I'm talking to us, but it's hard for me too. I <laughs> good. I'm like, yeah. No, I don't. Do <laughs> even, you know, I would say even people that don't have lupus struggle. Yeah. You know, with just different life events themselves. Really? And I think as, as women, we're taught. I lost you guys. Sorry about that. Um, we're taught to internalize everything. You know, we're taught to put a good face on. We're taught to keep our families together. Mm -hmm. We're taught that, you know, we have to make sure our children look a certain way when they, you know, because they're a reflection of you. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes reaching out to individuals and not judging them and just helping them where they're at yeah. and letting them know it's okay. Yeah. You know, if, if I've told a lot of friends lately, hey, if you can only do second by second, minute by minute, you know, day by day, you go at your own pace. Uh -huh. Just just go at your own pace. Uh -huh. Yeah, I yeah, I think that you that what you said is very important because so many times we um, we don't mean to do it, but we compare ourselves to others. Like, well, mm -hmm. if they have lupus, then we should be able to, you know, they look like they're not really going through something, but you don't really know because you're not really in their body. Exactly. You know? And a lot of times we do what you said. We put our best face forward. Yeah. They, just, they just assume mm -hmm. that you don't go through stuff, yeah. but when we compare medical records, mm -hmm. like, oh Lord, you went through that too. <laughs> right. Or worse, or right. you know, this very similar experience. Yeah. 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 And people don't know uh, where to meet you or how to be there for you if they don't know what's going on with you. Yeah. And that's where I feel like communication is the most is communication is key in everything you do in life. Yeah. You know, um, and so if you can find a way to communicate with your partner, with your loved one who is hurt or whether you're the one that's ill mm -hmm. um, effectively. And that that's what for me is what helps me and Emmett the most is our communication. You know, sometimes um, there's a lot of things he's been through. I've never been through and vice versa. Mm -hmm. My lupus affects my joints so bad, but that's also because of the injuries my body sustained to having a vehicle roll over it. Mm -hmm. I, I pretty much almost broke every bone, you know? And mm -hmm. so whenever there's a pressure change and, or a humidity change in the air, even by five, 10 degrees, I feel it immediately. Mm -hmm. uh, when rain is coming in, I can feel it immediately. Two, three wow. days before it's even going to come in. Um, I usually can tell it's raining because my foot will hurt a certain way. And my coworkers be laughing because I'll be like, it must be raining. And they'd be like, how'd you know? I could feel it. <laughs> wow. Interesting. Yeah. So it's like the moisturization and the air hits differently. And mm -hmm. guys, we're all coming from you from different states. Uh, Deliver mm -hmm. right here is from Louisiana. Shantae's in Florida. Chanel is in California and I'm here in Las Vegas. So different climates affect things totally yeah. different. Oh yeah. Big time. Yes. Yeah, Big the time. it came on last week. It rained like every day. It, it did, huh? Stirred up on Friday. Mm -hmm. My body was like mm -hmm. I that. <laughs> did not like it. Let's just say that. And then <laughs> and in Louisiana, we get we don't get Get weird temperatures like we may get some cold days but we really don't get the coldest so mm -hmm. when you hit 30s or the 20s or the 10 or in the teens it's like yeah and a girl is not used to it and especially yeah. with the lupus thing uh -huh. i'm originally from kansas and my family is from also my dad's side is from grambling louisiana so really? okay i know what you're talking about that weather is different in that midwest southern area 
Um, it, yeah, it's definitely interesting. <laughs> I'm from Illinois and I was shocked when it snowed out here in the desert last week. That was very interesting. <laughs> I bet, I bet. So to know with all your own battles that you've faced yourself, like as a caregiver, how do you persevere while watching a loved one battle with pain? Because I know right. it always gets different when you're seeing your loved one go through pain rather than yourself, especially yeah. as a soldier and a woman. Mm -hmm. That is the hardest thing, watching my loved ones hurt. And there's nothing I can do. But I try to be as positive as I can and pray. I, mm -hmm. I, I pray a lot. I pray over Emmett. I pray for my sister. My sister has lupus. And um, she has a different type. And she had to get a permanent feeding tube put in her. And so um, I watch them in their struggles and, yeah. and I just pray because sometimes I don't know what to say. Yeah. I don't know how to actually persevere my own self sometimes, yeah. you know, I sometimes I just sit back and, and I might have to write out what I feel, you yeah. know, or I have to write out what I'm thinking yeah. And if I notice that it's not a good time to communicate with Emmett, I'll wait, you know, right. and come back at another time when we can communicate because mm -hmm. sometimes we just don't hear each other, yeah. you know, and, and that's normal. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So speaking of you and you and Emmett and how you both have to battle lupus, and not hurting each other. How do you guys still keep up with the good communication when you just don't want to be bothered? You don't, when you hit that moment where you just don't want help, you want to be left alone. Like, how do you communicate that and still be compassionate well, to? <laughs> I just threatened to smother him with a pillow. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, uh, I think sometimes I just have to take myself out of the situation, you know, and remember that he's hurting Yeah, and he's hurting in a way that I can't comprehend, Yeah, nor am I the one carrying that load at the moment. So yeah. I just have to step back. And when he's ready to come talk to me or ready for me to help him, um, then I help him. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm a little overbearing and he yeah. gets frustrated, you know, I know, but it's not like I've told him, I don't see him as decrepit. I don't see you as, as ill. I see him as one of the strongest individuals I've ever met uh, to have everything that he's going through and still be so positive. Yes. That truly is what keeps us going. The positivity. We both have that positivity. We laugh a lot. We joke a lot. That's and important. I think because of that, um, and how we're able to pray with one another. I really know that's what that's what helps us encourage each other and keep us going. Yeah. Encouragement and prayer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's that's so important. That's so important. Mm -hmm. If you guys can have a good prayer life together, then you should be able to talk about anything. Mm -hmm. and, that's and that's the one blessing that we do. And I, you know, uh, I had a friend ask me yesterday, you know, I said, I, I prayed for someone like Emmett. I prayed that God will send me someone that would understand my pain. Yeah. That would understand my journey because I had been with people before who once I had lupus or I had a bad flare or whatever, they don't want to be with me no more because they were they scared. Did. Yeah. They, they were scared. Yeah. And it was almost like, dang, you know, who's going to love me when I'm yeah. not okay? Well, I just got to be okay for you to love me, yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's what it's nice. It's okay to not be okay around him, you know. Oh. Uh, he'll fuss at me though, <laughs> but oh. it's it's more of a friendly fussing. <laughs> you guys definitely do have like an amazing comedic um, <laughs> relationship. It's pretty hilarious oh. the jokes that you guys have between the two of you. Oh. We do. We we really you know laughter is the best. It is. And you have to sometimes find humor in what you go through, or I yeah. think you'd spend all your days crying. <laughs> uh -huh. Very yeah. mm. I, love that. I absolutely love that. I was taking some notes and this is no, what, you're fine. This is what I heard. And I was listening to what you said, because I think a lot of times we don't highlight or we don't speak about this. You mm. said 
for your understanding. You take yourself out of the situation where he's having a bad pain day. Mm -hmm. So you don't take it personal because sometimes it's hard not to take it personal. And sometimes feelings get hurt and you're able to do that. But you're able to do that because you do spend time in prayer and you also mm -hmm. journal, which I love to do. So you, write, you, you still get to express your feelings and mm -hmm. so you can come back to the table and talk to each other. So exactly. I think what Scared is helping a lot of people because mm -hmm. sometimes we're trying to figure out how to communicate and how to work through the relationship. But you gave us some great tips. Mm -hmm. okay. So anything you want to add, but that's what I got. Not yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, but mm -hmm. that's what I heard from you, and I was like, I think that was great information because when you're in the middle of it, it's like, how do you take yourself out of it and not yeah. get feelings hurt, and how do you come back? But mm -hmm. you said you pray, you laugh, you're. I mean, right. so we got everything. Mm -hmm. I'm quick to roll over and go to sleep on him in a heartbeat if he irritates me. I'll just roll over and go to sleep. <laughs> so I'm at such she's telling the truth about smothering and being overbearing with the dying. Leave this girl alone, Amy. Let her love you. <laughs> love you, but leave her girl alone. This is our real love special right now. She is so loving you guys oh my so you did get another comment um even the strongest warriors need encouragement that's they so do. true that's they so do. true you Absolutely. got another one i have the same type of situation having someone you love care for care for you is the best care there is there it yes. is it is it is very true i love that well, G.I. Shane is going to be um, giving away one of her books today. Yes. Unchained, which I had the pleasure of reading. Um, I attended the Male Lupus Gala or Male Lupus Warriors Gala in October in San Diego this year. And she gave this to me. And we want to share this with you today. It's a very empowering book. Um, and we're going to give you the chance um, to sign in or just type your name and we'll know who you are. Um, what else are you giving away today, Chanel? I'm going to give one of my GI Sheen shirts away. It's in purple glitter in the front for lupus, but on the back it says every, says not every GI is a Jill and it has a female soldier on there. Love it. <laughs> and then I also have a water bottle that has the same thing. Oh, that is so nice. You can see that. I love that. I have yeah. that one. It's a really, really nice one. I like it. So how do we get behind you, Chanel? Like, how do we support your mission? How do we get behind you? I'll be attending um, her event for veterans in California, March 18th, doing the makeup for all the women. How can we support you, find you, and get behind you right now? Yes, you guys can reach me on Instagram at gishane78. Um, also at gishane78 at gmail.com. Um, if you go to Instagram, all of like my phone number and stuff like that is on there along with my website. I am having a female veterans resource event. What this okay. is, is that um, as we talked before the show, there is a campaign that says 22 a day. And what that campaign is, is that there are 22 veterans who commit suicide a day. However, unfortunately, that number has risen to 44 a day. And the highest number of suicides are the age between 18 and 34, with women veterans making up 21% of those statistics. And their women veterans are also the highest homeless right now. There are more resources for male veterans than there are female veterans. However, in the community, there are more resources for just women, period. And as a, as a veteran um, and a soldier, it's hard to ask for help when you're so used to being the strong person, like you said. Uh, sometimes you don't always need a handout. You just need a hand up. You need someone just to reach out and say, hey, sis, I got you. Because that's what you have in the Army, mm -hmm. you know. So what we're doing is I am bringing different together different community resources to help veterans, female veterans specifically. Okay. I have um, someone coming in to teach women how to do e-commerce business, set it up online if that's what they're interested in. I have wow. someone who is uh, has a kid's camp. And, you know, as a woman, I had kids when I first got out the military. I would love to know about this kid's camp. Mm -hmm. I have people coming in to show how to do the new CPR method. 
um, due to the rise in fentanyl overdoses and stuff, it is not always suggested that you give mouth to mouth CPR anymore. It's a 30 compression um, technique. And so I have someone coming to demonstrate that technique uh, to individuals. I have the VA coming with their MST reps and their suicide intervention pre prevention team. Um, I have just a lot of different community, just community resources, anything that anyone felt like that was a resource, a positive resource for a woman or a man, because I did invite my male veterans, but this is specifically for female veterans. Um, and so that's what we're doing. And so if anyone wants to help or donate, I'm only accepting like gift cards or um, groceries um, or any feminine items like hygiene items or anything of that nature. That's what we're hoping, hoping to give out. Wow, Chanel, what you're doing in the community, in the community yeah. is absolutely amazing. Wow. Not only the lupus community, not only the, the caregiving community, but also as a vet and a female vet at that, to reach your hand out and to be able to help and touch all these women's lives is really amazing. Well, it takes a village. Yeah. And I, I had a village and I still have a very, very, very strong village. Yeah. And my village is what keeps me going. Uh, and I I make sure I can control only what what I can control. Uh -huh. And I try to let go of everything else. Um yeah. perfect, perfect <laughs> scenario. So my son called and, and said, Mom, she's having the baby. My I just had my first grand baby. And I panicked, oh, like I was the one that needed to go to the hospital. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I started running around the house and I was like, I'm not ready. And it was like, oh, I'm not having a baby. <laughs> and I, had to, I needed that though, because I was really panicking like it was me. Like so I was going to drive from California to Kansas. <laughs> <laughs> and so again, my village, my village stepped up at home. Yeah. And my son and and his Here. girlfriend and my baby while I'm not there. Yeah. And and I'm just so thankful to them. And That's not only cute. that, but you're creating a village, which is yes. also extremely yeah. amazing. Yeah. 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 Once you have a village, create your own for others. That's beautiful. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So we're going to have a word from our sponsor and give everyone the chance. The first one to comment, hashtag Emmett needs a kidney, is going to win Chanel's prizes. <laughs> we'll give you a few minutes to do that really quick, and then we'll announce our winner. Kidney is going to win I've been waiting for so long, girl yeah. To be with you alone, girl yeah, yeah. Move your back against the wall, girl uh. Don't be afraid, won't let you fall, girl No, no. You don't have to feel the pressure Okay, so I'm super excited to announce we have a winner. Yay! Drum roll, please. <laughs> and the winner that is spreading awareness and put hashtag find I'm in a kidney is Wendy Hug. Congratulations. Hey, Wendy. Congrats, Wendy. Congratulations, my dear. Thank you for supporting um, our journey to help Emmett find a kidney. You've won some amazing prizes. Show those prizes again, Chanel. So we have the book. We have this water bottle and the T-shirt. So, Wendy, I will message you and ask you your size. <laughs> Beautiful. Wendy. Thank you so much for helping us to spread awareness. Um, yes, thank you. Emmett find a kidney. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much for all you're doing. And Chanel, thank you, ladies. One more time. Oh, someone said congratulations, Wendy. She said thank you so much. Aww. I want him so bad. I want to find him one so bad if I could. We all Aww, do. That's beautiful. Oh, yeah. It's happening. It's happening. <laughs> yes, yes. 
So you guys, once again, um, for you to be um, eligible to donate this kidney to Emmett, you have to be uh, blood type A positive. Is it A? Or no, because I'm a B. Positive. B positive. B positive or B negative or O positive or O negative. Correct. So if you know your blood type, you'll already know if you can start in the running to be his donor. All right. So thank you, everyone in our community. And where can we find you again, Chanel? At GI Shane 78 on Instagram. Amazing. Okay, you guys, let's get behind this mission and let's get behind all the works that these lovely, amazing humans in our community are doing. Yeah. And that has some messages popping up as well. Until next time, fly free.